even though they're believers and they know God created them and God gave them life, they don't know exactly what God says about being a man. What's up, guys? So glad y'all joined us today. This is Remo, and we're coming with the Kingsman Podcast, where we're doing a call to manhood, finding your place, purpose, and power in the kingdom. And with me today is a good friend and one of the pastors here at Resurrection Life, Todd Goodwin. Hey, Remo. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? So good to see you. Glad good to be joined. here. Glad you joined. We got our coffee mm-hmm. that you even brewed for us. Yeah. It's really good. I'm not a barista or anything. Huh? I'm not a barista. Well, you know what? Not know, even close. You know what? A lady one time, they were arguing, them two Christians, a man and woman was arguing, you know, and they decided to decide who was going to make the coffee, you know. <laughs> and they finally, after the argument, the wife the wife came to him and said, you, didn't you read the Bible? It said you're supposed to make coffee. And she said, no, it don't say that in the Bible anyway. Mm-hmm. And, he, and she said, yeah, it does. Look right here. It says Hebrews. Hebrews. Right? <laughs> I'm so glad it didn't say he cooks. That's right. I do not cook. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so what's our topic for today, man? Anyway, we're going to be talking about basically this call to manhood, right, and this as men. Uh, and what is a man, right? That's kind of what we're talking today. Just as an introduction, we talk about manhood and biblical manhood, what now, is being that's a pretty. Man. That's a pretty big subject, uh, especially in today's culture. Very big. We could talk for hours, but we're only going to do it in about 15 minutes. Okay. okay. <laughs> do the best we can. That's right. So just thinking about um, basically, is there an identity crisis among men? And I, I personally believe there is. I think there's so many things that are trying to tell men what they are. It's how to. It's it's hard to discern what they are. You know, you're seeing grown men get more excited about wearing a jersey with somebody else's name on the back rather than their own name on the back, if so to speak. And I think it's really because they, 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 they not only look up to these men, but they, they want to have that life. They, wanna, they look at those men as like, oh, I want to be that person because they're not sure who they are. Now, you're talking about men in general. Just men in general. What about, do we think you have an identity crisis in the church? Oh, yes. Uh, you talking about as far as men, men, in, the men church. in the church? Oh, for sure. Why is um, that? Because I think that they don't know, even though they're believers and they know God created them and God gave them life, they don't know uh, exactly what God says about being a man. Because that's the only way. How do we have an identity? Well, that's what I was fixing to ask you. How, how does a man get an identity? I mean, right. how, where does he get it from? You get it from Scripture? You got to know uh, enough of the Bible? I mean, I know a lot of men. I've been in ministry a long time. Right. A lot of men don't know the Bible real well, but I know some people that are some men that are some amazing godly men. Right, right. Well, I, I, I do too, and I think a lot of that is we're never to the place where, oh, I know all the Scripture, and I'm a man. I could, I could know everything the Bible says and not not ever get to that place. I think it's always a process of becoming. So yeah. as, a, as a, a men's pastor, what would you say would be the best way for a man to truly find his identity? I think just that relationship with God and knowing. You know, think about Adam in Genesis in the garden. You know, he had this perfect relationship with God. He said he walked with him in the middle of the day. And in that moment, he was cultivating. He was developing. He was he was doing everything God had told him to do. He knew his place. Now, that's a, that was a perfect world. Right. We do not live in a perfect world. Right. And so when, well, when he sinned in the garden, when that, when that world was kind of thrown into chaos, mm-hmm. the question that God asks is, where are you? Where are you? And I feel that's what I talk about. One of our taglines is about finding our place in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. You know, Ezekiel 22, 30, I think he said, he said, I looked for a man to fill in the gap, but I found none. Well, why does it have to be a man? Why couldn't it be a woman? Well, God has his place for men and women. Okay. Uh, you know, that's a whole nother discussion, Ty, we're going to get into. You know, certainly. Uh, I mean, when today's culture, when gender is fluid, I mean, you cannot say that that's not creeping over into the church. There's no doubt it is. So how, how do we as ministers, how do we as men be able to teach other men the what their identity is? Right. Where do we find that? It's obviously... Part of it is the Bible, but sure. where's the other part? I mean, the other the other part is exactly what Jesus did. Who was the Word? He, you know, Jesus is the Word, but Jesus didn't just come and preach and give him a manual. He he led by example, and that's where that discipleship comes into place. You know, he called twelve men to follow him, and those men were to go out 
not that they didn't have other women who were who were leaders, yeah. but who who were followers of Christ and had their place. But the men were those. There's a line of responsibility, and God put that man. He created man first in the garden. And then, but does that mean that man's most important? The 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 male gender is the most important? No, sir, not at all. I mean, because in today's culture, it's almost like you know uh, they talk about toxic masculinity. Right. Right. Because he's not more important, right? The male, he created male and female. Mm -hmm. That even God basically says he has masculine attributes and he has feminine attributes. You know, there, there's there's this sides of God, and he tried to, male and female, that we could come together and become one to represent the image of God. And so, you know, I don't, I don't think there's one of these things like man's not greater than woman, woman's not greater than man. But to know the glory of God is for us all to be able to work together. You know, you think of it like a football team. Of course, I played football. And somebody would say, the coach calls the play, right? Drew Brees was in the huddle with the Saints. Yeah, I'm a Saints fan, right? So You better be. Yeah, but the Saints Where go marching at? in, baby. The Saints <laughs> go marching in. But, uh, you know, Drew Brees would get in that huddle. And can you imagine, he gets the play from the call. He gets the, the, the play from the coach. He calls the play. He's the head. And he comes in there and he calls the play. Well, can you imagine if the center or the guard or the, even the wide receiver or the receiver, no, we're not going to run that play. Let's run this play. So it has to be some, kind of, some type of order. Right. Because that's the only way you can deal with chaos, right? The trouble we're in, the, all the things that we see in our world turn upside down. You bring order into chaos, you know? And when that order has to be a line of responsibility, it's what I, the way I try to describe it. It doesn't, you know, people always throw that scripture at you, especially when you're doing a wedding. It says, wife, submit to your husbands, you know. And, but uh, isn't there mutual submission in Christ? Yes, sir. If we're both in Christ, then I'm, I'm mutually submitted to my wife, my wife submitted to me. But at the end of the day, who's God, who's God going to hold accountable for how the family's led? Right, the man. And mm -hmm. even, to, even more so, that's what I, if you really know, we just take that one verse, but the verse four says that a man needs to die for his wife, be willing like Jesus. Well, yeah. I don't know anyone who subdued his life more than Jesus did, right? So we've basically given up ourselves for each other. So, that, you know, answering that question about male and female, I think that's where we, we're looking at this from the wrong angle, and that's what makes it toxic masculinity or toxic femininity. We just, we're looking at it from our own perspective. From our selfishness. Right, and it's seeing two sides of the same coin, that God God is the one who designed it this way. And so, so when you send something about man finding his place, uh, is that his place in the kingdom, his place in this world, his place in, uh, you know, whatever? Right. Well, his place in the kingdom, you know, that's what we're talking about because the kingdom is there's there's a king, yeah. and, then, and we know who that king is, and he's over the kingdom. In this world, one day we know he's going to fade away. It's all going to be gone. So we, we, what we want to be able to find fulfillment in and satisfaction is know we're doing something for eternal consequences, right, something that really is significant and matters, and that's going to be about his kingdom. And finding that place is God has a place for every person he's ever created. Now, when we say in his kingdom, it's not like we're living in some virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. It's right here, <laughs> right here where we're at right, right now. Right here, right now. Wherever he puts you, you know, God has, a, has that place. But when I'm speaking of place, I'm not speaking of a physical place. Yeah. You know, when he said, I look for a man to stand in the gap, he wasn't talking about a physical place. But there was a place for that that per, a, a job to be done, a role to fill. Let me ask you this question: Do you think men, as a whole, inside the church, outside the church, we're looking for a job to do, and we find some type of fulfillment in the job that we do? Absolutely. Do you think that maybe we get it out of sorts, and what we do becomes who we are? Absolutely. Yeah. I've... So, is that a good thing? Is it a good thing to find no nope. my identity in what I do? No, I, I think this is you know I've been guilty myself, where you get so caught in doing even as a Christian, even as someone who says you know I'm giving my life to Jesus because He gave His life for me, but even for me I've got so caught up in ministry, which is a good thing, yeah. but so caught up in it I forget the God of the ministry. You know our place is in Christ, our place is in a person, but in that. As a part, as, as the Bible would talk about a body, the body of Christ, that we, in Christ, we have a certain position. We have a certain responsibility. We have a certain account that somewhere he's called us to. Uh, now, you said responsibility several times in here. So responsibility is important in being a man, in being a, a kingdom man. Absolutely. Well, you can't. 
you can't ever really be that man unless you are responsible. I think when he asked Adam, the first man ever created, where are you? He was basically saying, why why did you void your responsibility? He was supposed to be over that garden. He was supposed to be over that woman. Protecting and, oh, and cultivating. Now you just said something pretty <laughs> major. She was supposed to be over that woman. What do you mean by that? Now I'm gonna I mean, be in trouble. That's pretty big. I'm like, you know, because I know a lot of most of the women in my life are extremely strong women. Yeah, and and you know, it's, I'm glad you brought that up because I think in the Bible when it talks about, you know, being under submission mm-hmm. and all this stuff, it's not. Uh, it just means that you're. When I said over, that you're you're to protect. You're you're to be a protector, like a you know, like an umbrella, not an overlord. Right. You're not to lord over your heritage. The Bible says yep. you're not over there to rule and say, you know what, woman, you're gonna do this or it's else. My way I'm, or the highway. That's right. That's God would never intend. It. Look at Jesus. He never one time commanded anything like that. But the idea is that you came to be to protect. When I say I'm I'm over my house, you know, if I over my four kids and my wife, I'm just saying I'm I'm responsible. Right, they the food on their tail, like it's it's on me. It started with me, so I, I have to take responsibility for my actions. Now, in in the world today, in the culture, that is seen as toxic masculinity. Now, how does that translate into into the kingsmen, the kingdom, men in the kingdom? I mean, is that's a godly perspective? Or is that a worldly perspective? You're saying, well, it's my responsibility to take care of my family. Oh, uh, is, is your wife not responsible? Right. Well, she has her own responsibility. And, um, and, and she, I know my wife would be the first to say, well, you know, she feels responsibility for her kids. Mm-hmm. But I think um, just like anything that I like, when God calls you to be a leader, you know, you take responsibility, um, even if. Let's say, you know, there was some things that my wife was was struggling with. Maybe she was supposed to, you know, but I, as the leader, as the one who you feel like it almost, it all falls under you. You know, if I was over a corporation and maybe people I had working under me, they're the ones who messed up. Now, isn't that a lot of weight for a man to carry? I mean, that's a lot of weight. It's a lot of weight. I mean, you think about in this, this world and this current culture, people are like, oh, that's too much. I don't want that. That's why I think... Men are jetting. They're getting out because they're like, that's too much responsibility. Hey. How would you respond to that if I was a follower of Jesus Christ yep. in the church? And I'm like, ooh, that's a lot of weight. It's a great question. Rick, I'm glad you brought it up because I do feel the same way. I feel like men are burdened out. They're, they're, they're carrying all the weight, and so they just kind of concede, right? They kind of concede to, well, I'll just do my job and just put— you know, do what I can. Put food help. on the table. Put food on the make table. Make sure they have a house. They're not fulfilled. You know, I think most men, if they were listening to this right now, even say the Christians, people I talk to every single day outside of the church, I, I see the weight of that. I see the burden. They're not fulfilled, and they're trying to find that fulfillment. Well, you know what? I know that's a huge subject. Is that part of place? However, I don't know if we've— uh, I, I got a lot of questions. I don't know if we got time. I know we're getting some we? deep. We're getting into the deep water. It'll take yeah. too long to swim out there. So well, gonna, I, don't, I don't know if I get deep, but yeah. well, we're gonna we're gonna come into it next time. But I would want to say, just end it with this. You know, you brought up that burden, and that's why it's important that we find it in Christ because we can cast our burdens on Him, and we won't have to be weary or heavy laden. That sounds good. And as a pastor for a long, long time, it sounds really good. But how do I do that? Right. Can we talk about that next time? That's what we're going to do next time. Awesome. So we'll get into some application, maybe be able to help somebody out. So look, guys, we're, we're running out of time here, but we're so glad that y'all joined us today. And we're thankful that y'all been here with us listening. And we hope hope you're getting something out of this because God really wants to bring us on this journey together, especially as men, that we can be the men that he created us and saved us to be. So hope y'all join us next time. We'll have probably somebody else with us next time. Thankful for being with us, Todd, today. It was a pleasure. Awesome. And uh, we'll look forward to, to seeing now, you next I, time. I got some more questions. Okay, well, you coming next time. We're going to finish this. I got a lot of questions. Okay, well, we're going to finish this okay. out, all right? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. Y'all have a blessed day.